All righty. Welcome, everybody. I think let's just, there's a bunch more people jumping on real quick. Give it just a second. All right, well, let's get started. Um, welcome everybody to O-Shift Recession Proof Your Business. We have an amazing lineup today and I'm so excited you all could join us. Um, we're gonna have guest speaker, Joe Herrera. He's co-founder of the Joe Taylor Group out of Las Vegas and a certified exactly what to say guide. Um, we'll also have an agent panel of local agents that most of you all know, uh, Stacy, Billy, and Jesse. And then we'll follow up with Amy Youngren, co-founder of North Group. So I will go ahead and let Joe take it away. Well, good morning, everyone. I guess maybe good afternoon, possibly where you guys are. Um, hey, Cheryl, can you allow me to share my screen, please? So my name is Joe Herrera. I am a certified guide with the Exactly What to Say program written by Phil M. Jones. Um, in my opinion, probably the most relevant voice in the real estate space. I've been with Phil numerous times over the years. We shared a, a stage together in Boston, Massachusetts uh, four or five years ago. At the time, I just wasn't ready to, I wasn't ready to receive the things he was teaching. Um, he's, he's brilliant in human communication, which is uh, something that if you ask my wife, I can improve greatly upon. Um, but he, he has a, um, a way with words that enables me to improve my human communication and effectively communicate thoughts, ideas, and even shift people's thinking uh, from their position to a more neutral position. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about exactly what to say in a shifting market, which is super important. A little bit about me, uh, the Joe Taylor Group last year, we did about a thousand transactions. Um, in the la over the last 16, 18 months, we've expanded into multiple different states. We're currently operating in Utah, Cal uh, Colorado, Oklahoma, Arizona, soon to be Missouri, California, Tennessee, and think that, oh, Washington, D.C. Um, so we're always looking for expansion partners in other markets. Uh, we have about 1,300 agent partners in our network, uh, agents that we collaborate with on a, on a nationwide basis, or North American basis, I should say. And then we also purchase and invest uh, in properties. We'll do about 60 property acquisitions in 2022. Some of them we flip, some of them we wholesale, some of them we become the bank on and become the mortgagor. Um, and so we, uh, we have a somewhat robust business. To give you an idea of what our business looks like, the Joe Taylor Group has four components to it. The first is our retail operation, which is based, as I said, in Vegas and operates in multiple different states. Uh, I also run our network. So uh, mentoring, coaching calls. I was on a coaching call right before I hopped on this with a couple of our partners in Canada. Um, my partner, Taylor, runs our investment property. Uh, business, and he also runs all of our ancillary products. So we have ownership in a title company, a mortgage company, we're building out a solar option, and we also are messing around with insurance. So we're doing everything we can, especially in a shifting market, to monetize the sale of a property in as many ways as we can. So if you look at your world right now, you may think, my financial world changes when I sell a home, which totally makes sense. What we're trying to do is say our financial life changes when a home is sold and we monetize it in multiple different ways. For example, last month, our revenue from our network agents across North America was $100,000. We got paid on about 900 different transactions, small payments. It ended up being like $100 to $150 per transaction on average. But it added up to $100,000, which if you do the math over a 12-month period is a seven-figure business. So we're always looking for ways to monetize the sale of a property beyond just us opening a door and writing a contract. Our title company will, will generate about $100,000 a year in revenue back to us. 
Uh, our mortgage company should be a three or four hundred thousand dollar a year business. So <clears throat> that's what I'm obsessed with. When I started in the real estate industry, my focus was primarily just sell a home, get a check. My focus now has shifted quite a bit from sell a home, get a check to have as many relationships as I can with as many individuals as I can that when they sell a home, they and I get a check. And then we also get checks from solar service, title, mortgage, pest control, alarm, like in every different way we can monetize the sale of a home, we want, we try to do it. So that's a little bit about me. Um, let me, uh, somehow this thing skipped quite a bit. So today we're going to be talking about recession proofing our world by knowing exactly what to say in every single situation we find ourselves in. I'm going to make a guarantee to you, and the guarantee is actually significantly better than this. If you follow what the pattern I give you today, I will guarantee you'll generate $180,000 in GCI in the next 12 months. I'm going to teach you a, a tactic, and I'm going to give you a script that if you use, you will generate $180,000 in gross commissions over the next 12 months. Here's the issue. Most of you won't do it. You'll hear it, you'll think how simple it is, and you just won't do it. But if you're willing to do it, my guarantee is not 90,000 in additional GCI in the next 12 months, it's actually 180. And here's a little bit about what it looks like. In order to make $180,000 in GCI in the next 12 months, I need you to do this. I need you to send five texts per day. That sounds super, super simple. Most of us send hundreds of texts per day, but I need you to send spy, five specific texts per day 20 days out of the month. So you could take the weekends off and you could even take a couple of days off during the week, depending on the month, you'll have somewhere between 28 to 31 days to do it. You only need to do this for 20 of those days. That'll equal 100 texts per month and 1200 texts per year. These texts are going to give you a 1% conversion rate, meaning you're gonna send 1200 texts to create 12 transactions in the next 12 months. At an average price, depending on where you are, of $600,000, which is our market in Vegas, times 12 transactions times 2.5% actually is not $90,000. It's $180,000 in gross commissions. If you're on a split, a 50-50 split with a team leader or something like that, that's where the $90,000 would come in. I'm going to give you the script in a couple of slides in maybe 15, 20 minutes. But the principle behind it is if you change your words, you're going to change your world. So if you look at your business and say, man, 180,000 in gross commissions would really make a difference in my world, I'm gonna give you the words to use in order to change it. So here's a fact that we all have to be very comfortable with. Zillow came in and changed the game. When I got in real estate in 2002, I was the gatekeeper to the homes available on the market whether it was a website or an email, or at some points it's been like books of business, literally, somebody had to contact someone like me to get access to the properties on the market in Las Vegas. Some of you have been in the business long enough that you remember those days where getting access to properties, you were the gatekeeper. Zillow entered into the game and completely changed that. They went direct to consumer. So now the consumer knows that they can find what they are looking for by going to Zillow. I hope you're comfortable with that fact. Now, what Zillow's done really, really well is they've, they've gone direct to consumer with what people are looking for, and then they sell the consumers back to the realtors, and then we play the exact same game. This is why we're losing. This is why Zillow is a billion-dollar company, and a lot of us are operating uh, tens of thousand-dollar companies. It's because we're trying to play the same game that Zillow plays. So the what game is a losing game. The what game, what someone is looking for is a losing proposition because we will never be able to compete with Zillow for uh, in the game of what. So here's my, here's my counterpoint or here's my encouragement to you. Stop playing the what game. When you talk to clients, stop obsessing over price, location, square footage, and property features as the formation of your relationship. If you're willing to stop the what game, not that we don't need to know what they're looking for, but it should not be the focus of our relationship with them. Here's what our focus should be. We should become 
the masters of why. So think about in today's economy with the real estate market shifting, if somebody's reaching out to you or you get a lead from a team leader or whatever for someone looking to buy or sell a property, one of the number one questions I would ask pretty quickly is, I'm so glad you reached out to us. Help me understand the motive behind this move for you. Like, what's, like why, are you, why are you deciding to move right now? You can ask that question in a way that disarms them and allows them to open up to you. So in the past, we would treat it as a Zillow situation where we'd say, hey, I'm so glad to talk to you. Julie said, you're looking to buy a home in my area. Help me understand what you're looking for. That's what we would traditionally say. But now we've got to say, what's got you thinking about making a move? Like, like wh what's happened in your world that makes you think that where you're currently living is not good enough for you? We almost have to go through a past, present, and future um, process with them where we would say like, so where are you living now? Like, what made you decide on that property? If they're renting, then obviously you know that the, the like, what kept you from buying in the past? So it's always getting the past. Number two is getting the present. How is that working out for you? Like, what do you love about the home you're currently in? And then number three is the future. Like, does the home you're currently living in meet your needs? Or, uh, you know, is there a life change happening that is causing you to think about move? So the principle is, rather than knowing price, location, and square footage of what someone's looking for, understanding why they are looking in the first place does not we're, we're no longer at that point playing the Zillow game. We're playing our own game, which is the Y game. Zillow will never be able to compete with us in the Y game. They never will. So Zillow as a robot can only address the what. We as human beings can get very deep into the why. So if you're on a team or if you have a partner and you talk to a new client, that team leader or partner should be able to come to you and say, hey, tell me a little bit about the Smith family. And you should be able to perfectly articulate why the Smith family is thinking of making a move in September of 2022. If you cannot articulate why the Smith family is thinking of making a move in 2022, then you have failed to establish relevancy and context around your conversation. If I come to you and say, hey, tell me a little bit about the Smith family, and you go, oh, they're awesome. They're looking for 3,000 square feet on a quarter acre lot. They need four bedrooms, and it has to be under 400,000. I would say, no, 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 not tell me what the Smith family is looking for, but tell me why the Smith family is thinking of making a move. Do you know that they're possibly getting divorced? Do you know that the wife has been nagging the husband about parking his truck on their front lawn? Do you know that the husband has been begging his wife for a man cave? Like, why are they in the market in September of 2022 should be your only mission. The what is not necessarily accurate. We've all sold homes to people where they told us they need four bedrooms and they buy three in a den. We've all, all sold homes to people who say they need to be on the west side of town and they buy on the east side of town. So their what is not an actual fact because they violate their what all the time. If we become the masters of their why, that is how we win that game. So what I want to do with you is go through an acknowledgement that the why game is about discovering comfort and discomfort in someone's world. So some of the people, some of the time will move to become more comfortable. If you think about it that way, like if somebody loves where they're living or they love their current situation, some of those people will make a move because they want to be in a more comfortable position, some of them. But more of the people, more of the time will move when they are uncomfortable. So in our discussion of why with individuals, we should become very, very articulate and very, very curious as to why they're thinking of moving, because we need to discover that discomfort and we need to help them discover that discomfort. Some of them will just come right out and say it, but for others, it takes a little bit more creativity around our conversations. So here's something that we need to understand. This is, this is what, um, what I call the relationship creation equation. Uh, I'm not sure what Phil calls it, <laughs> but if you think about it, top left, we have questions, bottom right, we have decisions. So often we think we can ask one or two questions, which earns us the right to get someone to make a decision. If we don't do the middle part, that is exactly why we're failing. It's, it is the equivalent of eating a bread sandwich, like with nothing else. There's no meat, there's no cheese, there's no uh, mustard, which is one of my favorite things in the world. 
if we don't do the middle part, we're missing the whole thing because all we're doing is asking one or two questions and then expecting them to make a decision. If you need a real life example of this, think about your own world with lead conversion tactics where you say, tell me what you're looking for. You send them over a couple of properties and you say, which one of these would you like to purchase? Or which one of these do you think would work for you? We ask a couple of questions, we expect them to make a decision. Now think about adding in these additional components and how it'll change your world. Questions are not meant to get people to make decisions. Questions are meant for us to engage in conversations. Whoever is asking the questions in any given conversation is in control of the conversation. So when you are working with clients, you want to keep control of the conversation. You want to direct the narrative. So then you look back at your text messages and how many of them end with periods as opposed to question mark. Most of your communication with your clients should end with a question mark. If they come to you and say, hey, I really like the property at 123 Main Street. What do you think we could get it for? You can either fire off a, I think we could get them to 650, or you could say something to the effect of, obviously, I don't know what their bottom line is, but what's a number that you would feel comfortable being at knowing that you didn't overspend and you didn't leave anything on the table and potentially lose out on the home? Do you have a number in mind? Question mark. Two completely different uh, responses. By just giving them what you think could happen, you are eliminating their ability to create an ideal situation for themselves. Anytime you sell anything, you should never be the one issuing statements. You should always be the one asking questions. So currently I have my side-by-side -side for sale. When someone reaches out to me, they'll say to me, what's your lowest uh, price you're willing to take? I will say back something to the effect of, that's a really interesting question. To be honest with you, I don't know. What price are you comfortable paying? I will ask them a question because what I want is I want to get a number for them before I ever even evaluate what I'm willing to do. Now, I may know in my head I'm willing to take $30,000 for the thing. So it'd be so easy for me to fire back to them. I won't take a dollar under 30. But how would I not know that if I have something listed for 35, I'm willing to take 30. If I can get a number from them, they may come in at 32 and all of a sudden I'm $2,000 ahead of the game. If I if I issue a statement rather than a question, I'm giving them control of the outcome. If I wanna control the outcome, I have to continue to ask questions because those questions that start conversations eventually build relationships. Each of your clients should not be, they should not be a statement-based client. They should be a question and conversation filled relationship you have because relationships ultimately create opportunities and those opportunities are what technically lead to decisions. So if we're skipping from questions and expecting decisions and we're missing the fact that questions are intended to build conversations, which are intended to build relationships, which are intended to create opportunities, which are intended to lead to decisions, if we don't follow the path correctly, this could be where we are failing. There are four cornerstones of conversational excellence that we need to understand. Number one, the worst time to think about what you're going to say is when you're going to say it. I've gotten so committed to this principle that I won't even take meetings that I don't understand the context around. So if someone in my world says, hey, Joe, can I pick your brain? I ask them two very specific questions. How much time do you need? And what are we going to be talking about? The reason I do it that way is they know if they ask for 15 minutes and take an hour, I'm going to be pissed. If they ask for an hour and take 15 minutes, I'm going to be pissed. I also, I want to know what the topic of the conversation is because I want to prepare mentally for it. I do a pretty good job discussing things when I'm able to prepare. I don't do a very good job when someone fires at me a question or a request that I'm unprepared for. If you need validation on that, feel free to reach out to my wife. She's easy to find on social media. You could say like, hey, how does your husband do when you, when you blindside him with questions or concerns? She's going to answer that he doesn't do very well at all. So the fact of the matter is, if I want to be effective in my communication, I have to prepare because the worst time for me to think about something I'm going, I'm going to say is when I need to say it. Number two, if you are not having good conversations, it is because you are not curious. You need to become insanely curious about the people in your world. If you're a team leader, you need to be curious about your agents. If you're an agent, you need to be curious about your clients. Uh, you need to be curious about your spouse. You need to be curious about your kids. If you can say, you know what, so-and-so, we just really don't have that good of conversations. Our communication's not that great. You can fix it really, really quick by becoming really, really curious. If you don't care about what people think or feel or want, and you're not curious enough to dig into it, then your conversations are going to suck. 
Phil Jones quotes uh, a guy by the name of, I think, John Acoff, who says, empathy is caring about the things the people you care about care about. So if you don't care what they care about, and you don't ultimately show that care through curiosity, that's where your conversations are failing. Number three, you have to understand that people do things for their own reason, not yours. We want people to buy or sell or move or join us at our brokerage or join our team or whatever it is, because we want them to do that. If we haven't uncovered why that may be a great idea for them and therefore could get them engaged and interested in the concept, that's why we're failing. We're trying to get people to do things for our reasons when we need to obsess over them doing them for their own. The last part of this is something we already talked about, which is the person asking the questions controls the conversation. Selling anything has far more to do with destroying the option of no than it does with embellishing the option of yes. So the initial step in our conversations should not be getting people to say yes to our ideas, but it should be eliminating the, the ways that they would say no. So some of the ways that we do this is by issuing rejection-free opening statements. So this is a great phrase that we should be all be very, very comfortable with as real estate salespeople. I'm not sure if this is for you, but that's the phrase. So when I am in communication with a potential client or with I am in communication with a potential agent that I want to join my team or whatever it is, Issuing the word I'm not, or the phrase, I'm not sure if it's for you, but is a very uh, rejection-free approach because what it does is it disarms them so that they don't feel like they're being pitched or sold something. That's step number one. Step number two is using the word, but when somebody hears the word, but it causes them to lean in and actually become more interested. The real magic in this, con in this phrase is delivered through the final three letter a word of the, of the sequence. Word that typically should be avoided in all conversation, it is the word, but. Think about it this way. A couple of weeks ago, I was preparing to speak at an event and I put on an outfit that I thought looked really good. I walked up to my wife and I said, sweetheart, how do you think I look? And she said, you look great, but. <laughs> As soon as she said, but it changed the whole conversation. All of a sudden, I didn't feel like I looked great. I felt like I looked terrible. So the word, but causes people to lean in and actually more than, than anything, uh, you know, one of two things happens when you say to someone, this may not be for you, but your listener leans in and asks for more because they are personally interested or in the very worst case scenario, they say they'll get, give it some thought and they're going to memory peg and recall it a later date. So this may not be for you disarms them but gets them to cause to, to lean in. And while they may not at that point express interest themselves, they may uh, memory peg it for a later date. And that's the goal of that whole sequence. It's not to get someone to say yes, it's to avoid them saying no. So here's the principle. You remember I talked about that text sequence that if you send five texts a day, 20 days a month for 12 months out of the year, you can create $180,000 in gross commissions. Here's the principle. Using this text sequence and in everything we do as salespeople, we are not selling homes. We're selling hope. Hope is among the greatest motivators on earth. So what we're going to use is in this text sequence I'm going to teach you is we are going to use hope in order to get it done. So here's the script. Here's the rules. Write this down. Take three pictures of a really, really attractive property. Realizing that the most clicked upon images on earth when it comes to the internet are attractive people. Number two are attractive houses. Number three is attractive food. So it's people, either, you know, adults that, that dig adults, everybody loves cute, you know, pictures of kids and Getty style, whatever it is. Those are the number one clicked upon images on the, on the internet. Number two in social media and things like that is, is homes. So take pictures of a really attractive property, find a home that's on the MLS, use your phone to take the pictures. Don't screenshot them, but literally lean in with your phone, take a couple of pictures, and then save those pictures to your photo library and send this message to five people every single day. Hey, Julie, not sure if this is for you, but I saw this home that I can get a really great deal on. Who do you know that may be looking for a property like this at a great price? Super simple. So let's let's use it in a different way. 
Hey, Bob, not sure if this is for you, but I saw this home and I know the sellers are motivated. They're willing to look at any offer. Who do you know that's looking to get a great deal on a home? Hey, Sam, not sure if this is for you, but I saw this home and it has some amazing upgrades that the seller is motivated to actually sell the home. Who do you know looking to get a great deal on a highly upgraded home? Whatever it is that you can fill in the blanks with whatever you want, but the principle of, hey, I'm not sure if this is for you, but is the first thing we talked about. I saw this home kind of build it up and then say, who do you know is the magic way to get people, they will never say, I don't know anybody. That's just not going to happen. The worst case scenario is they'll say, let me think about it. The worst case scenario is, let me, let, me, uh, let me ask around and I'll get back to you. That's the worst case scenario. The reality is you're probably going to get a text back from them saying, where is it? How much is it? If you, if you want to win this game, you cannot include price and location in your text. So when somebody says, where is it immediately, or how much is it immediately, you have to exercise a little bit of discipline at this point, walk away from your desk and wait about 10 minutes to text them back. Be like, like, you know, if, if, if Bill says to you, like, where is it and how much? 10 minutes later, you're going to say, Bill, exclamation point. I'm away from my desk and I don't have it right in front of me. Let me get right back to you on that. Out of curiosity, is this for you or for somebody else? And if so, do you know the budget? Question mark. If this, for some reason, doesn't fall inside that budget, I'm going to find something else like it that does and send that over to you. You've walked away from your desk so that you could be honest enough with Bill to say like, hey, I'm not in front of my desk, but I'll send you the details as soon as I can get back to it. And number two, the game here is not selling Bill that house. It's getting Bill to admit to yourself and to him that he may be interested in that property. And then you want to find a little bit more out about what Bill's looking to do. This principle is what my whole career was built off of. We would text, generally text or email at the time, new homes that had great incentives to a client base and let them kind of raise their hand. So we were always, we would always find the house, find the client. Where right now, so many of us are stuck in find the client, find the house mode. So, hey, not sure if this is for you, but I saw this home that blankety, blankety, blank. Who do you know that blankety, blankety, blank is the script you're going to use? I am firmly convinced that if you send this text five times a day, 20 days a month, 12 months out of the year, 1,200 texts, you will get 1% conversion for every single text that you send. The reason why we use who do you know on that second point is if you reverse those words and say, do you know anyone? The answer is generally going to be no. If I reached out to each of you today and said, hey, Stacy." Do you know anyone looking to blankety, blankety, blank? Her answer is generally going to be like, you know what? And I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. Her gut reaction, her gag reflex is going to be, I want to say no. I want to say I don't know anybody. But if I said to her like, hey, Stacy, who do you know that's looking to collaborate on a large level with someone like me who has a lot of referrals to send across the country? She's going to, worst case scenario, say, let me think about it. But generally, she's going to say, well, why wouldn't I be interested in that? <laughs> and so it's, this is the funny part about everything that Phil teaches is it's just moving a couple of words around changes the whole way the conversation goes. Do you know anyone is a loser's game? It's the loser's phrase. Who do you know sets us up for victory? Here's another rejection-free opening statement. How open-minded are you? So when you have an idea or a concept you want to share with somebody, asking them how open-minded they are is super magical because uh, the simple preface, how open-minded are you followed up with your suggestion makes your idea significantly more attractive. Now, I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to answer it inside your own head. How open-minded would you consider yourself? So if there's 100 people on this call, here's what would actually happen. If I ask a room of a thousand people if they consider themselves open-minded, guess how many of them would say they are? At least 900. So 90% of the people you talk to would consider themselves open-minded. So if I start a phrase with, hey, Bob, not sure if this is for you, but how open-minded would you be into entering into a collaboration uh, relationship with me where we share thoughts and ideas, you're in a different market than I'm in, uh, we send referrals back and forth, like how open-minded are you to that principle? Nine out of 10 agents are going to go, yeah, I'm super open to that. 
If somebody reaches out to you and says, hey, I need to list my property. Typically we go into what mode, which is, okay, cool. It's worth 900,000 and here's what we would do. Here's step one, two, three, four, five. A better way to do this would be to say like, Sandy, I'm so excited you reached out to me. Thank you for trusting me. How open-minded are you to discussing the state of the market right now? So just so that we can make sure when we do list your property, we price it right, you know, yada, yada, yada. By asking that client how open-minded they would consider themselves, you virtually guarantee yourself that they're going to consider whatever you say next. Where if you would say like, awesome, I'm excited to try to sell it. The market's super challenging right now. As you know, I'm going to do my best, but you know, fingers crossed, that's just a loser's way. Most of us would never say that anyways. But using the phrase, how open-minded are you, kind of establishes the playing field that we're going to have an open and honest and free discussion with each other. So that gives you the ability to say like, all right, well, let's talk about it. There's some challenges. Like, you know, how would you feel if blankety blankety blank? So it using the phrase, how open-minded are you, basically sets the stage for um, an open and free discussion. That is... A lot of what uh, this is just, uh, we're just dipping our toe into the exactly what to say program. Um, we're always offering workshops and doing different things. I, I'm, a, I'm a fervent note taker. This looks a little bit like John Nash in uh, A Beautiful Mind. But, uh, but my advice to you is uh, let's connect. Follow me on Instagram. I'd love to connect with you guys. I'm always sharing thoughts and ideas from the exactly what to say work. I'm one of about 15 certified guides in the exactly say to, or what to say program in North America. So we're always running workshops and, and things like that around the work. I shared with you three of 35 magical phrases we should be using in our constant communication. So here's my advice. I would encourage you to read the book exactly what to say and begin to use these principles in your human communication. Imagine a world where entering into critical conversations, things, tough, dis, tough discussions, you know that your thoughts and feelings will be considered. Like, how would you feel if in every conversation you have, you know that no is not an option? Like entering into a conversation with somebody, you know that they're not gonna say no to you. How does that make you feel? Well, that's the power and the principle behind this work. The exactly what to say is not, is not a manipulation tool. So much of what we learn in the real estate space is, is uh, manipulative discussions meant to bend somebody's will to ours. The fact is exactly what to say and, and using our, our words wisely is not intended to get people from their position to our position. It's intended to get people from their position into a position of neutrality. And that's what I love so much about it. I, the way I describe it to, to my agents is there is no such thing as going from first gear to re reverse without passing through neutral. The exactly what to say principles are, are intended to get people into a neutral state, intended to get people into an open-minded state, intended to get them to, to, to imagine a, a bigger world for themselves. I'm grateful for the opportunity I had to share some of these thoughts with you guys. I'm grateful for Cheryl and for putting this together. I think, uh, I think she is, is brilliant for um, doing what she can to help agents. The reality is there's so much competition in real estate. What, imagine a world where we collaborate with each other. Like there's so much uh, me versus you. What if it's us versus the issues? And I think what Cheryl's doing, I, I'm a big fan of in, in trying to get agents together in a way that we can learn and collaborate with each other is so intelligent because I'm not like, there's enough walls built. Like we need to be bridge builders. Like there's enough, um, there's enough uh, challenges that we face like what I'm seeing in Vegas is different than what you guys are seeing in your market. But what if we could learn from each other? And what if you could say, hey, Joe, like, what are you seeing in Vegas when it comes to this? And what would you do if you were in my shoes? I'm a very highly collaborative agent. So give me a follow. Feel free to ping me on Insta. Cheryl knows I'm always pretty quick to respond on there. Cheryl, thank you so much for having me. You are still muted. Thank you so much. Your talk was amazing. I know if you haven't read the book, like you said, exactly what to say, I highly recommend it. I've read it and it's, I'm just constantly learning more and we loved your talks. Thank you so much and um, collaborate with him, follow him because he puts out so much content every day on Instagram, social media, and you guys won't be disappointed. So. Okay. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you so much.
Next up, we have our local panel of agents. So most of you all know them, but if you guys want to go ahead and hop on. Yeah, Stacy, Billy, Jesse. Hey guys. So Carol, most everybody knows you all, but why don't we go ahead and just quick give a quick introduction if each of you want to kind of talk about who you are, what you do, and all the fun things. Who wants to start? I'll start. I'll start. Yeah. Um, I'm Stacy Swallow with House of Brokers. Um, Stacy Swallow and Associates. I have got a team of five, um, and we are here in Columbia, Missouri. Um, we have a team of five amazing agents. Um, we do a little bit of everything. Um, a lot of people think we just kind of do new construction, but we do um, everything, including commercial. Um, been here in this business for, in the real estate business for 20 plus years, been licensed for about 18, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have Billy Dexheimer with Iron Gate. Yeah, again, Cheryl said, my name is Billy Dexheimer. I'm with Iron Gate Real Estate. Uh, they're one of the largest, largest brokerages in mid-Missouri. Uh, I've been a realtor for about seven years now. And uh, so Stacy's way ahead of me on that game. Uh, so she's pretty <laughs> awesome. Uh, I don't know but, that's a uh, good thing. <laughs> no, absolutely love it. Actually, Stacy and I are working on a deal right now. So we're having a great time. Uh, but no, absolutely love it. Excited to be with Iron Gate. Uh, it's a great company with a lot of support and excited for the opportunity. So thank you, Cheryl, for asking me. Yeah, you're welcome. And then we have Jesse with the Walters team. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, Jesse Walters, uh, the Walters team, uh, part of EXP Realty. Uh, most of you uh, probably know my wife, Megan. Uh, she's been doing this for five years, um, and she got so good at it, I decided to jump on and join her. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I uh, very entrepreneurial based. I started another business, uh, recently sold it. Uh, and as I was looking for something to do, I uh, jumped in full uh, on the real estate side. Um, I got my license officially earlier this year, uh, but I can say I've been in the real estate industry the entire time with Megan by curiously through all of her transactions and learned a lot along the way without actually uh, being in the contracts. But Yeah. And Megan right now is coming home from Orlando because she was um, named uh, NAR's 30 under 30. Um, and they're yeah. in celebration for that. So she's on her way back. She's super disappointed she couldn't join us, but we have um, Jesse with us in her place. And so let's go ahead and get started. If you guys, tell us what you're seeing, your perspective is happening right now in the market and what you're doing to kind of stay ahead of any slowdown. You know, there's so much in the media about, oh, recession's coming. And what are you seeing and what are you doing to stay ahead of that so our businesses don't recess with it? Me first. Sure. <laughs> um, we are, I mean, we are telling our clients and us as realtors, we are staying informed by our local information. And we stress, I stress to um, our clients, you know, you know, everybody watches the news, but not to panic and to talk to our local lenders and um, people like that. So they know what's happening because what's happening here may not be happening in Vegas or New York or anything like that. Every market is different. Um, I think we're um, a little bit luckier here in Columbia, Missouri. We're actually a little padded, um, in my opinion. Um, we're keeping out in front of our agent or in front of our clients. Um, we're doing um, lots of in in person. We're back in person now, which is great, but we're doing events. Um, we're doing a lot of online um, and try to do a lot of video stuff. But I think um, the market now, it has shifted as we are all feeling it, but I don't believe it's shifted in a bad way. I believe this is our normal um, rates. Rates, yes, rates have gone up, but as you know, five and five and a half are still amazing rates. Um, when rates started going up from two, three and four, which were unsustainable, um, I went home and looked at my interest rate when I first bought our first home, which was, I don't even want to say 94, 93. Um, and our interest rate was 8.65, I believe. And we were still buying homes. So now when rates are at 5%, 5.5%, people are a little panicked. So we encourage them to speak with their lenders, keep in contact and not panic by hearing what they're hearing on the world news and all of that. Um, and our, you know, that's, that's just what 
we're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, Billy, you want to chime in? Yeah, I'll piggyback off of what Stacy said. Uh, great things. The market right now is slowing down, but we got to remember this is relative to what it's been. So this past year or so has been absolutely crazy. Uh, so things when they're slowing down a little bit doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It just means we're getting back to a spot that is comfortable right. and traditionally okay. So um, it's been such a seller's market lately that it's finally good to have the buyers with us because they don't get so frustrated with everything uh, by losing out on you know multiple offers and going above asking price i know there's some concern with the interest rates going up like stacy mentioned but again that's also relative it's hard for people that were in this market at three and four percent to continue to look in the five and six percent range because their budgets change a little bit but as the market stabilizes in that five to six percent interest rate and new buyers are coming in they're only going to know those rates so they're not going to be frustrated by an increase it's just going to be their normal so don't be frustrated by what's going down because like i said it's relative to where it's been and it's been crazy high well and i think we're seeing i don't know about you guys or jesse maybe you can chime in on this but i've seen a lot of buyers just even since labor day they're ones that couldn't even compete in the previous two years, they're starting to resurface again. You know, they're hearing that things are coming down and we're having a lot of people reach back out that were kind of on the sidelines. So the rates don't like, even seem to be affecting them. I feel like our buyers are happier. They're excited. Um, lot, a lot less tears, it seems like. <laughs> um, a lot less counseling. Um, they're excited. There's more stuff to look at and they're not competing with, you know, like you said, four and five plus offers, 20 offers on a house and going 60, $70,000 over list price. Um, so I think that's a really good thing. Yeah. And Jesse, kind of what is your team doing to, you know, stay ahead of any anticipated slowdown that we're seeing or what are you guys doing, you know, moving forward the rest of the year? Yeah. So we're really pouring into marketing. Uh, Megan's been really good about that um, over the last few years, but uh, we recently brought on our first staff member, unlicensed uh, employee, uh, and her full-time job is marketing. Um, so we're really pushing that, putting a lot of money towards it. And uh, we, we think, you know, if, if we keep uh, top of mind, a lot of people, uh, just our face and our brand, uh, consistently in front of them, like regardless of what the market's doing, I think that's only going to pay off for us. Um, and we're pretty fortunate just coming from a different industry and in business, like, uh, your marketing dollars can go a lot further in this industry, you know, like you, you can put a few grand to something and, you know, one sale will kind of give you that money back. <laughs> uh, and I'm not used to that. So, uh, uh coming from coffee, like I had to sell like 3000 cups of coffee just to make, <laughs> get that money back. <laughs> um, so now it's like, well, yeah, like let, let's really uh, pour some gas on this fire and really, really push it. And I, I, I think for all agents, I think marketing is something uh, you can really pour into and get your money back out of it. And it is so, you know, I was talking to an agent in Colorado, I think just last week, and they were like, they're like the fact that you guys can spend a two, a thousand, $2,000 on marketing. They said where we are, agents have to spend like $10,000 on Google. And that doesn't even put them at the top of the leaderboard as far as marketing. So I think we do have, we underestimate how much power we have with marketing and it, it there is a huge um, platform there. Yeah, and Cheryl, um, uh, like you said, people are preparing for a slowdown, you know, uh, but with real estate, it's one of those careers where you always have to prepare for a slowdown. Right. You know, you, you work right now to get buyers and sellers and sell a house, but and those closings are 30 and 45 days out. You can't get wrapped up in those transactions completely. During that time, you have to be preparing for the next section of people. And so there's always a slowdown. So always have that mentality of a slowdown, because if you don't work and market and do your social media and work with your, uh, you know, the people that you work with before, your friends and family, every month is going to be a future slowdown. So just <laughs> constantly think of that. that. It took yeah. me a long time to learn that. It's a great uh, response, Billy. It took me a long time to learn that, the slowdown for, I mean, man, it was 10 to 12 years and my chest would get heavy every time we would have a market slowdown. I'm like, <gasps> not a market slowdown. And I still have a mentor that she's like, relax. And it took me so long just to take her advice and say, that's just how it is. You just, and you learn to adjust. You learn to adjust and you appreciate the slowdown. 
that's when you do, you know, all your catch up work, the stuff that you've held off doing when you've been so incredibly busy. So. And I think we all can appreciate somewhat of a slowdown. I mean, the last two years, we've all just been going, going. Fun, There's been so tight, right? No right. time to look at what we're doing, look, work right. on, on the business, you know, do new fun things. Um, so I think we should, in some ways, be excited. And I feel like this is normal. This is yeah. coming back to being a normal market, if I can say that, um, yeah. if there is such a normal um, yeah, I believe yeah, I that this is what it feels like to me. So yeah, and we're, I, still, um, we're still busy. Um, there's still lots of listings coming on every day, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's all good. Yes. Um, so Jesse, you guys are doing a lot in marketing. Are there other areas of lead gen you're doing? Or are you just focusing your lead gen? Marketing is your lead gen. Uh, yeah, so uh, really social media, Google, um, it, I think it's a, a lot, a lot of our leads come from right now, but like, honestly, I've noticed too, um, it, we're year five of this now, um, we've put a lot of effort into past client, uh, retention, just those relationships. And that's really starting to pay off for us now. Like this year, we've gotten a lot of past client referrals. Um, and it, granted, that's a very long-term game to play that. Um, it feels uh, so good though, doesn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> it yeah. So it's. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to, to see that. And like, yeah, Me Megan will come in. She's like, I, I had like three clients call me the other day and like they're, they had a cousin or they're wanting to sell the house they just bought. And I was like, okay, like, well, yep. let's, let's, let's get this going. So it's, it's pretty <laughs> cool when that, when that happens. So I, 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 yeah, I put a lot of value in that now. Um, you know, yep. before it was just like, you know, you're pouring into it and just hoping something happens in the future. And now it's, it's starting to kind of like dominoes starting to fall on that. It's pretty cool. It does seem to balloon. So I've been in real estate for about 12 years now, and it did seem about five years in, I started getting that. And, and about 10 years in, it really started to see, you start seeing a huge portion of your business becoming past client referrals, past clients. So that is something super exciting. But, um, and Billy, you do a lot of video and a lot, you get on, you're on TikTok <laughs> a lot. And um, so kind of tell us what you're doing for Legion and like, give us some insight into your world on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm kind of a goofball online, but that's just my shtick. You I know, that's, that's just great. how I am. Different. <laughs> uh, but you know, I'm going to uh, echo a lot what Stacey and Jesse said. Um, you know, you can, you can dump $10,000 into Google and Zillow and realtor.com and all that stuff. But the people that you know, and your past clients and the friends of their friends, those are, those are things other people can't buy. You know, you cannot put a dollar amount on that. You can't get that from an online lead source. And those relationships that you have are much easier to cultivate because you have common interests, uh, you have common past with them. And so, you know, really focusing on that. And if you're new to the game, obviously you don't have past clients to give you referrals, but everyone, hopefully everyone has friends. A lot of people have family, whether they want to admit it or not. Uh, but there's lots of people in our lives and and those people also have people in their lives. And so one of the biggest things is just keeping yourself out there so that people know that you're a real estate agent. Um, it's easy to forget. There's a lot of agents right now. It's at a, when here in Columbia, it's, we're over 800, which is crazy. Um, so you really have to always remind people that you're a realtor and uh, you know, they have to see that constantly because I can't remember what all my friends' careers are. But if I, you know, occasionally talk about real estate here or there, I have a post on social media. It's not just on my business account. I'll cross-reference it with my personal account. So keeping your name out there and the front of your friends and family and don't take them for granted. Never assume that they're a done deal. Uh, you might lose a cousin if they choose to go with another real estate agent because uh, you'll be mad at them, but maybe they just don't remember it. So always stay out there and make sure people know what you do and that you're good at it and successful. I'm going to kind of add on to Billy's where I enjoy watching Billy stuff. I laugh out loud. Um, and it's funny because a lot of stuff, some of the stuff that our team posts is not always about real estate. We're seeing where people want to know what you're doing in your personal life. If you want to share, people love it. And of course, remind them that you are in the real estate business, but people want to know what your family's doing. People want to know that what you're doing on vacation. Um, they just love to see that, you know, we'll post something and we'll have triple, quadruple the um, site of hits on that than we do just real estate. Cause people are like, some people they're like, they get bored with that as of course. So I think you have to put yourself out there personally as well. Um, 
if you if you feel comfortable doing so, which I think um, all of us here pretty much do feel comfortable. Um, and they also know that you know real estate does consume your life, but also you, they have to know that you have a life and that you do have a family and they want to see that you're a real person and not just out there selling real estate and trying to get people to buy real estate. I think they want to see who you are because um, I think that makes them feel comfortable. Um, I think um, we've gotten so we've, you know, we've made so many friends in relationships and I'm also going to say, you know, there's so many agents here and we do try to keep in contact, but sometimes, you know, somebody's brother does go get their license or their best friend does go get their license. And that's okay. There's plenty of people. And I'm going to say, I love the phrase that Joe used the building, the bridges. I love that. Mm -hmm. Love that. There's, there's plenty for everybody. Um, we all work together. So we try not to get ruffled feathers or get our feelings hurt by if, if a, you know, your friend or who a colleague goes and uses somebody else, it's okay. There's, there's, there's plenty of, there's plenty of people and um, it's all good. I mean, everybody just needs to work together and um, when that's, it's like that's, that's how I, that's how I kind of deal with it. I, at first um, I was, I would get my feelings hurt that I didn't get a listing or I, you know, some of, they chose a different agent for a buy, you know, buyer's agents. Um, and that's okay. It, 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 and it happens for a reason. So it's sometimes it's a blessing. When it's like Joe said, and that really, you know, struck a chord is that everybody does things for their own reasons. And especially starting out, like you take it so personally, but we shouldn't because usually everybody knows 10 realtors and, and okay. the reasons they do things most of the time, if you're doing your job right, it's not because of you. Um, and that, that is a hard thing, you know, especially. I think we get our feelings here. Cause I think most of us who have been in this business and are good in the, you know, good. We're just passionate about what we do and we want all of our clients to be happy. So, yeah. Um, with Stacy, if there's like one thing that you could contribute to your success this far, like what, what would that be? What would you oh, say would be? Um, of my team, um, clients, huge, huge, um, clients. Um, I, my mentor, I have the best mentor, um, it's clients, clients in my team, I say is number one, number one. And Jesse, what about like, as far as your team, like what, what would you say? Yeah. Um, it, it's funny. I, I thought about this question. Like when Megan first got her license, like we were talking about this and, um, I, I, th I think the biggest thing that struck a chord with her and she still talks about us today is treat it as a business, not as a job. Like, cause you're a business owner, uh, and really getting the fundamentals of business, uh, you know, you know, learn accounting, like get QuickBooks down, things like that. Um, I, you know, <laughs> you could be, you could be a rock star agent, you know, someone has like crazy, but if the business isn't managed well, like it could right. collapse from underneath you, but if you're not watching your expenses, um, and it really, and it's fine tuning it too, like really putting processes and structures in place, like, cause then you can really scale it and really it snowballs really quick when you start doing that. Yes. It's knowing your numbers and systems. I mean, you can only do so much without systems and then it's going to fall apart. And right. I think that's a huge, huge thing that, you know, it's overlooked a lot and it's not talked about a lot. You know, we talk about the fun, the marketing, um, the selling, but we don't talk about the numbers and the systems. And that is such a huge piece of it. And that is it's just the unfun part, Cheryl. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's it is. Part. For me, at least it's the <laughs> unfun, unfun part. Yeah. Well, for, we're like fully aware of it and we still like hit those ceilings. Like, oh, we have to put this process or system in place that we're going to keep growing because like we can't do, we, we cap ourselves out and we have to, you know, put something in place and, and we're fully aware of it, but we still hit it. And it's, yeah, it's, it's not the fun part, but it, it's necessary. You're going to keep growing. When systems are always changing, systems are changing, you know, as your business gets bigger, you're changing, technology is changing. So that's just like a constant thing. Um, what, I mean, what would you say, Billy, as far as, is there one thing that you could contribute? I mean, you know, Stacy and Jesse's answers are amazing. Um, one thing, and you know, there's many, but 
a huge thing is communication. And I'm not just talking about with the other, you know, with sellers, buyers, other agents, title companies, lenders, uh, communication with the whole world and just kind of having yourself out there a little bit, providing value. This is not like Joe was talking about. This is a totally different real estate market that we're in. I kind of, you know, in 2015, 2016, kind of used to the whole Zillow thing. Um, but you have to provide value uh, a little bit. And that's constantly changing too, because companies figure out, oh, they want to do that or they want to do that. Well, let's provide this as a business model and we'll take that over. So figuring out and constantly being aware of what value you provide and communicating, communicating, communicating is so crucial. I'm going to add on to um, that to our lenders. We need to give a lot of credit to our lenders. We got some great lenders here that work super hard to, to get our buyers qualified and the ones that aren't qualified. Um, we've got a couple that have just helped them tremendously to clean up credit in order to get them qualified. So find yourself some, you know, good pocket of lenders because that's, that's huge, 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 huge. And I'd add to that too, is just like collaborating with lenders. And especially if you're newer is like really understanding what's out there and loan products and understanding that piece of it, even though we, you know, we aren't the ones who are providing that advice, but it, it just makes you so much more knowledgeable and helps you get buyers to the finish line and, and um, just collaborating with lenders and other agents. I think collaboration is such 100%. a huge piece of success for all of us. And well, I agree with that. We're, you know, we talk, we've got friends, uh, we've made friends in the business all over the country. And, you know, we talk to them and they're in Texas and Maine and New Hampshire. And I love to hear what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, because you can see what people are here, but it's always fun to bring back new new trends and ideas here of what other agents are doing elsewhere, which I think is fun. Um, and and I, I enjoy sharing that. I enjoy sharing that, so. Yeah. So if there is one piece of advice, Billy, you could give to a new agent starting out today, <laughs> what would you tell them? Um, biggest piece of advice is to not be afraid. Uh, don't be afraid to talk to people. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there on social media. Don't be afraid uh, to take some risks. And the biggest thing is I, some, I sometimes think, you know, when you're starting off something as complicated as real estate and there's high stakes in it is, you know, like Stacy was saying, you know, if you don't get a listing, you, you know, you're kind of down or a buyer goes to somebody else or you didn't get that contract because you got outbid. Um, that's always going to happen no matter how successful you are. Uh, don't be afraid of that and don't be afraid of failure. Uh, people are terrified of failure. And uh, one of my favorite quotes, and I'm paraphrasing, is uh, failure is pivotal to success. Uh, you know, when you fail, you've just figured out something that doesn't work. And so you learn from it and you move on. Uh, so don't be afraid uh, and don't be afraid to fail. I love that. Yep. Yeah. Love it. How about you, Stacey? Um, oh, sorry. What's the, <laughs> no, <laughs> what piece of advice would you give to a new agent? A uh, new agents coming in. Oh my gosh. That is, it is very scary. Um, it's scary. It's an expensive business to start. Um, mm -hmm. I would recommend, and like I've been doing this for 20 plus years, um, get a good mentor, get a great mentor. Um, I use them. I still talk to my mentor. Actually, I share, a, um, a wall with her. Um, she's amazing. She was, my mentor for 20 plus years. Um, that's huge, 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 huge mentor. Yeah, no, I, you go, I mean, your brokerage, I mean, that's your backbone. You got to have support. You've got to have support of your brokerage. Um, and, and I think that's, that's huge as well. Mm -hmm. um, but um, new agents or find a team. Um, yeah, I came in, I've never, ever, I was on my own for maybe two years. Um, and a team is just how I like to roll. It just is, it's easier. It makes, it's, it's more fun. Um, you bounce ideas off one another. Um, so I'm a big team person. So if I was a new agent coming in, um, I would highly recommend finding a good, um, team person to, to learn under, um, cause you're not all, allowed to just like, all, you know, yeah, throw your know that, after Stacey. No, you're just like, always gonna you know, stay, everyone's like, always join Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> you're not always going to stay. We know. I mean, you know, I've been on other teams um, and that's how you grow. That's how you learn. That's, I mean, but that's what you enjoy. Like you, Cheryl, I enjoy watching you grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've known you since you've been probably what high school. So, yes. yes. So, yeah, that just makes me old. 
Yeah, fun fact. She did <laughs> chaperone me to a concert once when I was like, <laughs> not supposed to tell that. Yeah. Um, no, just having a team. Yes, I think it's so great. And it's just being able to collaborate your local team, you know, a nationwide team. I think having that support everywhere is just so, uh, you know, a team of your lenders, title companies, all just uh, it, that can go in so many ways. And it's it. I agree with you. And it's great to get ideas from um, other agents that are not at your brokerage. It's OK. We know we all work together just because we're not sitting under the same roof collaborate with other agents at different brokerages there's i mean yes. yeah there's some stuff that they're not going to share with you but most of the time you just it's you just work together so i think that's what makes you a good agent so and then um jesse for you i mean what what do you what did you see as far as like the one piece of advice you and megan would give is because you guys have i mean in such a short yeah. time grown so big and you know it's in the time that it takes a lot of agents twice as long yeah um yeah i i put 99 percent on little megan um she's been really really good with it but uh billy i applaud you in social media like i do not have the courage to do what you do right. that is not <laughs> an easy thing to yeah, do but we I enjoy can. it absolutely no yeah. shame over here it's no i love it yeah uh, yeah like you're you're you are much more courageous than I am for sure. Um, but uh, on that, I, I think social media, like Meg's been doing that since day one and just been consistent with it. And I think that has been a huge uh, growth factor for her uh, in the business. Um, and just say Stacy and Billy also both hit on this, uh, but I, I had a quote in my phone. I had to look it up because I, I, I keep it in my phone a lot. Just no matter like any business you're starting or just part any part of life, I keep it in my phone. Uh, but it says, have the courage to take action when you don't have the answers ahead of time. I think that'll take you further. Uh, like, like I, I think a lot of people try and prepare, prepare, prepare. And like, okay, now I'm ready to do this. But like, no one will ever be ready. You just have to go. We, we learn something new every single day. Something different happens. I, like I said, I've been doing this for a while. And there's a, something new comes up every day. So we learn every day. So Sometimes the best answer is, I don't know, but I'll I don't know. It. We can yeah. find out, right? Yeah, I don't know, I, but I'll get you the answer. That's you know, right. so I'm going to yep. work at it. 100%. Yeah. Collaboration, consistency, that seems to be kind of the trend we're hearing. And I think it's, and just doing, going out and doing. So if any of the attendees, if any of you all have any questions for our panel, go ahead and um, submit them in the chat. Um. And I'm so excited that you guys all joined us today. I think you guys are all doing amazing. I love watching all of you. Um, why don't you, if you guys want to share your social channels and the handles in the chat too, so everybody can follow you that is not. If we don't have any questions, we will go ahead and move on to um, our next speaker, last but not least, um, Miss Amy Youngren. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you. <laughs> and Amy, so Amy is a founder of North Group and she so is out of you? Toronto. Yeah. Do you want, want to give a brief introduction? Um, I don't know that a lot of people know you. I know some of them do, but yeah thank you well thank you so much for this opportunity i'm um can you guys hear me you can hear me okay i mean you know, I just mentioned in the chat like you can hear my voice all right yeah um, yeah so. well first of all thank you so much for this opportunity i'm i'm proud to be the uh token canadian for the uh <laughs> for o shift um <laughs> my name is amy youngren love to connect with you guys on instagram if you uh are on at Amy Youngren underscore. Um, I have a real estate team here in Toronto. We are 13 agents. Uh, yeah, it's, we started, our team is North Group. We started five years ago, just over five years ago. We just had our five-year anniversary. Last year was an anomaly. So it's like, I, it's like sharing stats about like what a successful team we were last year, you know, as a $200 million team in five years, something to be really proud of, but it was also an amazing year. So many of us have records from 2020 and 2021, but I'm an agent that's in the business. I'm in the trenches with buyers and sellers. I'm, um, you know, leading and growing our real estate team. And that is a 
exciting and challenging journey in and of itself. And then I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a part of real brokers. So I'm always like working on things that we're, we're doing for the industry as well. So uh, I'm also a real estate investor and uh, yeah. And if you check out, if you, if we are following each other, then you know that my pride and joy in life is that I'm a proud aunt. I have nine nieces and nephews and three bonus children. So when I'm not in all things real estate, I'm in all things kids. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So tell us what, like, what are you and your team doing right now, focusing on right now to ensure that you are successful in any market, whether we're going downtrending, recessing, what are you guys focusing on? It's such, that is actually such a good question because <laughs> I think that markets like this, um, they they illuminate the need for the basics. And I just heard you say the words um, consistency and collaboration. I'm like, oh shoot! I hope I don't. Yeah, I hope I don't have uh, like th that. It sounds too much like what you've already heard. But one of the best lines I've ever heard in the real estate industry is that big results are built on the back of micro commitments. And I can't take credit for that quote, but by God, it is one of the things that has set us up for the success that we have seen. It's that especially now with the, with you know, uh, a, a, a pending recession. Um, I, th I don't know if you guys have already like declared that you're in one. We haven't yet. No. Um, no, not really. Okay. So, so similar to us where it's like, it's like, we feel like we're on the cusp of it. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to center around the basics and everything is going to center around those basics being income producing activities. So what, what eliminates the fluff, what get rid of the fluff, get rid of the shiny objects, cut costs, and just focus on the basics. Because right now that is what and if you can thrive and you can succeed in this market by doing those things, then every market will be will be gravy on top of that, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're new into the business and you take these steps and you follow this advice, you'll be able to handle literally anything that comes your way. And I think that that's why we're going to weather this storm is that that it, it is what we've prioritized and what we've focused on is the basics, the very thing, like the income producing activities are all that should be focused on in a day and the rest needs to fall off. If you have time for it, great, like and in spare time or extra time at the end of the day. Um, but lead generation, lead follow-up, going on appointments, writing contracts and mastering your craft. Those are the five pillars and that's what we need to be focusing on. And that's what our attention is on. And then Within all of that, um, tracking and really understanding the metrics for all of it. And this is a great market to start to be able to know that. And, and I think it's really critical for us as agents, as team, if we're on a team, building a team, brokers, like what, whoever you are within the sound of my voice, this is the market to make sure that you've got that super tight so that you know know your numbers, know your tracking, know your conversions, uh, because then when the market shifts again, which it will, <laughs> we all know yeah. that, and it changes to a different type of strategy, it may, it may feel, you know, like it, 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 some markets feel easier than others, for sure. You will, uh, you will have such a strong foundation. It will be, and it will have been inevitably uh, set you up for massive success. So I, that was a really long ramble. I don't no. know if I answered your question or not. Yeah, no, you did. And we had talked about that too, is like, it's in the unfun stuff of tracking your numbers, knowing 100%. your budgets, your systems, and just um, like Joe said, five texts a day, like being yep. consistent with doing that. And I, I think, you know, if you your business slows down, you can probably look back and say, well, the last two months I wasn't doing it consistently. Um, Our the thing about our business is that we get so, and maybe I'll tag on to the, you know, even what we were just talking about, because the, the number one piece of advice, and I actually just said this exact line and had this exact conversation with an agent that I'm currently coaching. They're not on my team, but I, I coach a few agents 
and he will make a million dollars again this year, not just last year, not the year before, a million dollars this year. And he is seven, six, six, maybe years into business. And he still was asking this exact question. And I said, make peace with boredom. Make peace with knowing that you have to just do the boring, mundane lead gen follow-up because what we do today produces results for 90, 120 six month days, six months from now. That's the bottom line. And we have such a need for instant gratification in sales and in and in real estate. Um, I, I mean, I, I know a lot of people in the sales business, but we're in, we're in real estate and like our industry is so bad for that. It's like, we just chase whatever, you know, chase the transaction, shiny, chase object. The shiny <laughs> object, exactly like SOS, shiny object syndrome. And we're just constantly chasing that. But if we would just every single freaking day be okay with the days where it feels boring, knowing that that's the work that's going to produce results, it would be such a game changer. It'd be such a, it would, it would just, yeah, it would be a game changer. <laughs> so that leads into my I'm passionate question. about this topic. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then what are your non-negotiables that you do every day and every week that keeps you moving forward no matter what? I think you have to know it's lead gen. We like, I don't know if everybody's read the one thing or not by um, Gary Keller and Jay, and Jay Papazine. And I know that they're, they're, they are a KW, but it is an amazing book for realtors, entrepreneurs. And it's knowing what is the one thing that if you did that one thing consistently, it would change the trajectory of every aspect of your business. And in, in our business, we as agents, we think, oh, it's I need to write more marketing or I need to make some reels or I need to um, whatever. Anyways, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. It is there is nothing else that we should be doing other than uh, generating like talking on the phone, generate or DMing, whatever it is, like yeah. whatever your tool is or your method is going to be. Uh, generating leads and following up on those leads every single day. And you have to know where you're at in your business to know where your pipelines are and what your conversion within those pipelines are. And I talk about this a lot, but typically if you want to make six figures, so if you want to make about a hundred ish thousand dollars, $150,000, $150,000 a year, on average, the statistics are that your A pipeline, which is um, triple A clients, triple A clients. And by that, I mean, they are approved, they are active and they've been at an appointment with you. So they've been in a listing consult, a buyer consult, whatever that is. So they're approved, they're approved, they're active, and they've been through an appointment on average. If you're looking to understand your numbers, you need 10 to 12 people in that a pipeline that fall into that category in order to see two transactions and if i would use and then you have to know your metrics you have to know your conversion and your numbers but that's a great framework to understand so for me i know that if i talk to five clients a day five clients like just for me it's like anywhere between three to five as long as i'm constantly talking to three to five clients a day and I keep my pipeline at 12, I will always be doing two deals within that group of people constantly, constantly. And then of course there's B and C, but I know that we don't probably have time to get into that. But right. one of the things that I feel like Jimmy Mackin, actually, he's the co-founder of Curator. He said this a few, uh, about a year and a half ago when he spoke to our team, he was like, why do agents get so caught up in all the other aspects of their business that they forget that their actual job is sales. Like it's our job to sell real estate. It's our job to move people through the funnel of C to B, B to A and A into a new home or A into a sale. And we get so caught up in all the other work and all the other things that are distracting us that we actually forget that our entire job is just to sell real estate. So um, yeah. my non-negotiable, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's talking to my buyers and sellers. It's talking to agents. 
every single day. I, that's what I do. And then one of my other major non-negotiables is that I follow my schedule. I'm a huge, huge proponent of really keeping to a calendar and following following the schedule that I've set out for myself and then reviewing that to see where did I waste time? Where did I, uh, where can I adjust? Where can I get more dialed in on how I'm spending my time? And I think that's so huge because you don't follow a schedule and then the things that the, the, the making the calls and the lead gen and some, you know, it's so easy to just that not happen for the day. Yeah. And it, oh, for it, sure. your day just gets yeah. taken away from you. And, and I think that is a huge, I, I agree with that completely. <laughs> um, <I agree> with <laughs> so what would you say? I I'm a, kind of think I might already know this, but you've talked so much about Legion. Is there anything else besides that, that you would say is one thing that has contributed to your continued success? I mean, maybe even outside just being consistent every day and following up. I think I firmly believe that 80% of this business let me, let me start over. I firmly believe that 20% of this business is all the, is the lead gen, the follow-up, all the work we do, mastering our craft, the training, the skills we develop, all of that. The rest is mindset. Mm -hmm. 80% of it. 80% is mindset, how you think about yourself, how you think about business and life in general, how strong you control your thoughts and what you believe for yourself and the outcomes and the things that you are creating with your life and your business. I, my, our minds are a muscle and I, 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 I believe that it's a muscle in the fact that it's like anything that you can exercise it, you can strengthen it, that if you falter with it, that you can come back to it and muscle has memory and that it will, it will, it will adjust accordingly. So I think that this, that the more you practice positive thinking, the more you practice thinking about what you want to create, what you want your life and your business and how you want to it to unfold um, and move away from negativity, move away from thoughts that are, um, causing you to setting you back, making you feel like in, inadequate or inferior or um, yeah, that's what I just, I, I think that's what I would say is that it's mindset. It's, and it's, it's taking the time to work on that because it takes, it is, it's not easy. It, if it was, then, then we would all just be like surrounded by like all the most amazing things in life. Like if we would just actually recognize that everything that around us, the success that we re, uh, accomplish, the lives that we lead, it's all create starts with our thoughts. It starts with how we, what we create there. Then, then we would see that we would see like that perfection around us. And it's not like that. So we have to practice it just like we have to exercise our muscles. We have to go to the gym to stay fit, to stay healthy, to, to strengthen those muscles. We have to do the exact same for our mind. And I really believe that. And so much of this business is mindset. So much of it is how I can control my thoughts around how I'm going to handle this situation, this client matter, doing the work that I don't want to do because it feels boring. It feels basic. It's all mindset. You know, and that is something we haven't touched on at all. And I think that is such a huge piece of this business because especially when, you know, the we're working with so many people. And although it is such an amazing, most, for most people, it's a happy time in their life. It's such a high stress time. And, and I don't know how many times people have said, they're like, I don't know how you keep your cool. Like you're dealing with stressful situations all the time. Yeah. And it's so hard to, I agree is positivity. It, it, it's a huge piece of your success and just having confidence that, everything that it's like one day you have 10 deals and the next day you don't. And just being positive that it, it, it's fine. It'll keep going. I can truly say that I went, so if I, we have a team of 13 agents, the ones that master how they think and exude that level of positivity and confidence in their business and with their clients, they're more successful. They honestly are. 
they're, they are more successful and clients pick up on that too. Like they, they know if you're coming in with that in how, like, it's so, it's so evident in how you communicate, whether you're confident and positive about the situation, the circumstances, the outcome. I mean, it's our job to control our thoughts, which then helps control our emotions with our clients. Like it's our job. And it's our job to be the one that's confident in what, what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. That is, it's such a huge thing. And we haven't touched nearly enough on that. I think um, it's a big, I think it's a big thing. And it's, it's something that I invest a lot of time in, you know, reading about and, and working on. And I think it's something that we overlook, but it is a huge, it is a huge component of success. I firmly believe that. Yeah. And guys, um, Amy does, if you follow her on Instagram and stuff, she does do a lot of masterminds talking around this. I know um, we've said in some recently. Yeah. And and we do, um, we do a free mindset training, if you will, mastermind every single Monday morning, virtually Um, any, and everyone's welcome. Anybody can join us on Monday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern time. If you want just like that good 20 to 30 minutes to fuel and propel your week and just to kick it off on the right, on the right foot, it's a great, it's a great 20, 30 minutes. And then we do, you know, master classes and things around these topics and others um, on a regular basis. So yeah. Yeah. And, and this week we talked about the power of positivity. Oh, Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um So what do you see as far as like trends entering into the real estate marketplace in the next few years? And what are you like things that agents really should be leaning into now? As far as, I mean, I'm not one of those, like, I don't know if I'm like the best educator (laughs) when it comes to trends. Um, I'm one of those people that literally like has my blinders on and have my head down. So sometimes I miss the trends, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but I think that, bec- and that that's because there are so many distractions and shining objects and trends out there and they do tend to come and go. Right. I think that in this season that we find ourselves in economically, that I would be leaning into something that's going to help me from a, from, for, for two reasons. One, I would want, you know, I heard you say the word collaboration when we first started. Mm-hmm. I think that's critical because business is hard. It can be lonely at times and any aspect where you can surround yourself with like-minded people or people that are, have gone further faster than you so that you can do the same. I think that's critical. I would be, I would be hitching my wagon to those people, um, right now. And that's what I'm doing in my own business. And then the second thing is, is like, I think that there's an opportunity in the industry and we're seeing that come more and more from different models and things like that is like, I would be focusing on where do I get additional income from, you know, as an agent, are you investing in real estate as in, so that you have passive income or as an agent, um, are, do you, are you spending any time, you know, in the stock market or looking at revenue sharing models within the real estate industry? I would be looking at how do I not just I wouldn't deviate from real estate, not for a second from buying and selling, like helping buyers and sellers. But if you have the time and you're interested in creating additional revenue streams with with the way the market's changing, I'd be scooping up real estate and creating passive income there. I'd be I'd be, you know, scooping up stock and creating passive income there. I'd be like looking at revenue sharing models and and things like that. So I think that's what what agents could be looking at right now, especially with the season of the market that we're in. Well, in passive income too, if you have that passive income and sales, you know, ebb and um, flow, yeah. th- your mindset, I think you're able to not stress out so much about, oh, I have to make the sale because you have income on, you have passive income that's supplementing it. And I, I agree with you. I mean, I think real estate, it's diversifying and not putting all your eggs in one basket it helps your mindset too. It gives you a peace of mind that you can for sure. Do the best for your clients too, and not just be solely focused on that commission dollar. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And especially because as more and more clients are like, we experience it a lot here. I don't know what it's like in your market, but a lot of clients just pressed pause for the last 90 days. And that's been scary. Yeah. Uh, 
but I've been thankful that I've been able to invest in real estate. So I had some passive income there and I'm glad I'm a part of a company where there's revenue share. So that's passive income. And, you know, so we have to do, you have to make business decisions that are going to be smart for you financially right mm -hmm. now. So. Yes. But I like do, but I, I, I think that a big piece of, of what is needed right now is, is the aspect of like, who can you attach who can you align with that's going to help you go further faster right now? Because this it's, it's about to get harder. It's not, it's, it, I, I, I heard a line recently and I said this actually, when I was speaking at something last week, I said, the market's not shifting. It's shifted. The market's not changing. It's changed. And we're going to need each other. And we're going to need to be aligned with, with great people to go to, to stay strong and to be better through this. Yeah. And so I completely agree. And collaboration has been such a, uh, we keep hearing that this whole time and all the, everybody yeah. we spoke with and everybody that's, um, you know, truly seen success, they've collaborated with other people to help them get there um, faster together, like you said. Um, and so would you say that, was there any one defining moment that has really contributed to your sales? You know, we've talked about, um, you know, things you've done that has contributed to it, but is there like one moment that you're like, this is when things changed for me? I don't think that there's like one particular moment. Um, but I know that it is a, a way in which I operate that has been my game changer. And that is that like, even when I first got into real estate sales and I couldn't, I eliminated like going out for dinner and buying new clothes and doing things because I prioritize hiring a coach. So I think that that is for me, that difference maker, that, that, that defining, it's not a moment, if you will, but I made the decision right away that I was going to get mentorship and I was going to, um, throw myself into accountability because the most successful people in the entire world, whether that's in sports entrepreneurs, I mean, any at sales, Anything where you see success, you see somebody's willingness to be accountable and willing to be mentored. And I just knew that my business was going to grow to the extent that I would grow and that I wanted to be constantly surrounded by somebody who was challenging me and inspiring me. So I'm constantly putting myself in a seat where it's uncomfortable. I embrace uncomfortable. I embrace accountability because those are the things that are it's not like I need somebody to motivate me to get out of bed. I don't need somebody to motivate me to make my calls. And if you do, that's okay. But recognizing that is so critical. And I did at the beginning, when I first got into sales, I was like, I just needed a coach to tell me like, did you make your 20 calls today? Did you do this today? Like just, at, we're all at a different stage in our business. Right. And so knowing, um, putting yourself in a seat where you would, will be highly challenged and accountable and mentored. I think for me, that has been in coachable. I think that for me, that's been very defining. Yeah. This, I just loved everything you we've talked about today. Um, you know, I think you've given so much insight to our attendees, just everybody we've talked to about collaborating and being, um, sorry I was echoing back here um yeah I just you know collaboration and consistency and it's just been an amazing thing we've heard from everybody and I'm so so thank you today for you know coming on and talking to us and everybody getting to know you so uh, my pleasure um, <laughs> I should drop my I'm going to change um I think my Instagram handle went to just um the panelists. So I'm going to drop in. Oh, you're oh, right. It's not letting me. It's not letting me do it. That's okay. No problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd love to connect to anybody. Who has, you know, if you, if you are struggling in your business at all, or you have questions at all, I mean, I know Cheryl's amazing. She'll like absolutely answer any questions um, that anybody has, but if I can do it and do anything for anybody, just reach out anytime. Happy to chat. Well, and so Amy, she is one of the, we talked about one network leader. So I dropped it in the chat. Yeah. Um, she does it every week. So, you know, if you guys like this and enjoyed, um, you know, talking to Joe and Amy, 
follow Joe, follow Amy. We have so many, they offer so much opportunity for collaboration and um, it's a brand agnostic. It's, it, we talk to so Absolutely. many people. And um, we have people from literally every brand from the industry, which is the best part. So we're like constantly being inspired and motivated by what everybody else, what everybody's doing together. So it's awesome. Well, I thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. And for everybody else, so thank you all for joining us today. Uh, again, follow One Network Leaders, um, follow Joe. If you would like more opportunity, we are going to be um, potentially looking into a um, local in in-person mastermind. You know, I know there's a lot of us that would love to collaborate more. And I know like Stacy and Billy and Jesse, they have all always been great to reach out to. Thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you guys have a good day and um, follow us, follow Amy, follow Joe and um, have a great rest of the week. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you.